हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट एटीन अर्बन इन्फ्लुएंसेस ऑन रूरल एरिया इन द कॉमन पार्लेंस एनी बिग सिटी और टाउन फॉर दैट मैटर एनी मेट्रोपोलिस इज बिलीव्ड टू बी अ मेल्टिंग पॉट वे आर पीपल फ्रॉम सेवरल कल्चर्स come and coverage to become one urban mass with distinct culture if we analyze this within the framework of science and particularly physics we might describe it as a centripetal force of urbanization on the other hand there is centrifugal force of urbanization also which influences rural areas often such forces become factors of social cultural economic change in the rural society in urban sociology the process of such changes has emerged as important with number of studies being focused on social and cultural changes in rural areas now let us discuss some major studies for past many decades several authors both from india and the west have contributed to this branch of knowledge the prom- a prominent scholar among them is aman shrinivas who has analyzed the impact of both industrialization and urbanization on rural system in great depth he has highlighted how different areas of rural social life are being affected by urban centers mark homestrom has analyzed the political network of leaders in the rural pocket within the bangalore corporation in the context of election the influence of urban market on village economy has been the focus of study of d n mazumdar he has carried out this study in a village called mohana near lucknow it is not necessary that the villages which are in the vicinity of the city are influenced often villages which are far off from cities but has a significant proportion of its population as immigrant exhibit high urban influences this has been highlighted in the study of a village in up by e arns he notes that since every migrants in this village live in different cities and towns they regularly send money back as remittances the reason for this is that most have left their families back home such money orders based economy has a spin off effect in the sense that their dependents have cleared their debt and some are sending their children to school this implies that though this village is not the in the vicinity of a city but is under the impact of urbanization rd lambert's study too highlights the facts of varying degree of influence of urban centers on the rural life and culture social changes are maximal in the area where displacement is sudden and maximum the most important contribution in this field has been made by m a m s a rao who has argued that many villages all over india are becoming increasingly subject to the impact of urban influences 
but the nature of the urban impact varies according to the type of relation a village has with the urban area. This urban area could be a city or a town. Now let us discuss urban impact through migration. It has been postulated that the rural urban inequality in terms of economic and social well-being would accelerate rural urban migration. The pull factors operating through the highly productive sectors in urban centers would attract labor force from the rural areas. Many among rural poor would have moved to urban area in any case as a part of their survival strategy and supplement their family income in their villages. Rural economy often plays an important role in ensuring balance between demand and supply of labor through circulation of population in different seasons of the year. Broadly, three different kinds of rural urban migration could be identified. First, there are villages in which a significant proportion of population have sought employment in far off urban areas. In this situation, they leave their families in the villages of their birth. This situation is prevalent not only within the country but also in overseas cities. In either of the situations, such immigrants visit their village either during festivals or on family occasions. Most significantly, majority of them send money regularly. In villages, because of constant flow of money to such families, the economic status is raised. In some cases, even the urban employment itself becomes the symbol of higher social status. In tangible terms, families of such immigrants have been found to build fashionable houses in their villages. They have also invested money on land and industry. Then it can be safely to be inferred that whether the immigrants reside in India or overseas cities, the feedback effect of urbanization remains significant for such villages. In this situation, the urban impact is felt by villages despite the fact that physically they are neither situated within the cities nor are near them. Second kind of impact is felt by villages which are situated near an industrial town. These villages are exposed to several kinds of influences. The reason for this could be with the coming up of an industrial town, some villages might be totally uprooted. Lands are partially acquired. Influx of immigrant workers. Demand of all kinds of amenities for new residents. And finally, ordering of relationships between immigrants and native residents. In real terms, this could mean that because industrial township is coming up, so there would be employment opportunities for villagers at their doorstep. In other words, this means that there would be a shift in the occupational structure among the villagers. Hence, villagers, instead of depending upon agriculture, would send their adult members of the family to work in the factories as well. 
a considerable number of workers would commute from the city to the factories and eventually may shift their residence. Hence, it is important to remember that urbanization due to industrialization has general as well as specific influences on the villages. This specific influence has more to do with the nature of industry. Hence, agro-based industries will encourage farmers of the surrounding villages to devote more agricultural lands for that particular crop. The best example in this case could be that of the sugar mills. It has been observed that the farmers in villages around sugar mills tend to cultivate sugar cane on larger portion of their land. Finally, the third type of urban impact is felt by phenomena of ever increasing size of metropolitan cities, which may times convert into megalopolis. In the above situation, normally either village is sucked into the city as it expands or land excluding the inhabited area is used for urban development. Such situ situations give rise to rural pockets in the city area. In such villages, the landless peasants get cash compensation which they either invest in far off places or in commerce or squatter money. The villagers in general seek urban employment. In villages where land is partially acquired, their cultivation is still possible. But then farmers take up the emerging demand in consideration while deciding for the type of crop which they cultivate. Another effect of a metropolitan city on the surrounding villages is the outflow of urban residents who wish to move out of the congested areas in the city into the open countryside. Rural areas in the immediate periphery of the large cities often act as dormitories for poor migrants who commute on daily basis as they are unable to find a foothold in the cities. The rural periphery which absorbs these migrants has to deal with various socio-economic problems due to deficiency of basic amenities and social fragmentation. These often lead to a outbreak of epidemics. Social tensions as also group conflicts as the local residents struggle and fight with the migrant groups to access or share the limited employment, opportunities and basic amenities. Furthermore, the environmental lobby gaining strength in these cities often launches measures to push out the pollutant and obnoxious industries to these areas, thereby creating a process of degenerated peripheralization. Understandably, this process helps the cities in reducing their infrastructural cost and pass on the responsibility and cost of social transition to peripheral villages. Beside economic impact, such villages also change in terms of political features. One of the unique features is that the villagers participate directly in the cities or corporations politics. The slum dwellers in the periphery often 
constitute the vote bank for political parties. They are thus affected by the political process at the city, state and the national levels. This is very unlike traditional villages where political landscape is governed by intermediately structure of taluk and district. These villages have direct administrative links with cities. It should however be noted that not all the villages may be said to have been exposed in the same way to urban influences for the nature of the relations of the village with the cities and the response of the village to these situation vary from village to village. Now let us wind up the session and take rest. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self-learning podcast.